Dottie and I are here to read chapter two in Who Was George Washington Carver? Childhood. Every day, George explored the fields and flowers and animals on the Carver farm. It was a big farm about the size of 180 football fields. Moses and Susan grew corn, wheat, and potatoes. They raised cows, pigs, and horses. There was always plenty of work to do on the farm. Jim and George were expected to help the other farmhands as much as they could. Jim was big and did some of the chores that took strength, such as plowing the fields. But George never seemed to be fully healthy after he cut recovered from the whooping cough as a baby. He was often sick. My body was very feeble and it was a constant warfare between life and death to see who would gain the mastery, he once wrote. Because he was often sick and not very strong, George was excused from the heavy duty work on the farm, but he still wanted to be helpful. So he did what he could, such as taking care of the plants and flowers and feeding the animals. George didn't go to school as a youngster, but he still had quite an education on the farm. From Moses, he learned to waste nothing. Moses believed that everything the family needed to live was available right there on the farm. From Susan, George learned how to sew, cook, and clean. Susan even made her own clothes with the help of a spinning wheel she kept in the house. When George was eight years old, he was baptized a Christian. Because he loved nature so much, George always referred to God as creator. George went to church on Sundays, about a mile away from the farm. During the week, he played with the neighborhood kids. Most of them were white, and he learned to get along with people, no matter what color they were. Mrs. Bainham was white, one day when George was helping her with roses, she showed him the paintings in her house. George decided he wanted to paint pictures like that. He didn't have any brushes or paint or canvas or paper, but Moses had taught him, him to make good use of whatever was available. So George squeezed the juice of some berries, took a small stick, and started painting on a flat rock. When George wasn't working or playing, he took long walks in the fields and the woods, talking to plants and flowers and caring for them. Here's him drawing on the rock. He cleared a spot in the woods where he kept his own little nursery, a special place for plants. Strange to say, all sorts of vegetation, which is plant life, seemed to thrive under my touch, he said. He collected rocks too and stashed them by the chimney in a corner of the house. Susan would make him clean out the corner, but the pile would soon grow again. Here's his pile of rocks right there. George was incredibly curious. He wanted to learn everything he could about the plants and flowers and animals he saw every day. When he saw a cone flower, he wanted to know why it was purple. When he saw a black eye, when he saw a black eyed Susan, he wanted to know how it got its name. Sometimes Moses and Susan knew the answers, but not always. The Carvers had an old spelling book. George read the book cover to cover, but it didn't have the answers he was looking for either. George wanted to go to school and learn all that he could. Diamond Grove School was in the same building where George went to church on Sundays. One day he and Jim walked to school. 
Imagine George's excitement at finally being able to find the answer to all of his questions. And imagine his disappointment at being told that the school was for white children only. The kids George went to church with on Sundays and played with in the neighborhood could go to school, but he and Jim couldn't. They walked back home. Jim went right back to helping out on the farm, but that wasn't enough for George. He didn't give up on his dream of going to school. When he was about 13, George went to Moses and Susan's and told them he wanted to leave. They were the only parents he had ever known and he loved them so very much, but he wanted to go to school. His plan was to hike to Neosho, which had the nearest school for black children. Moses and Susan always said the boys were free and they could leave if they wished. So they didn't stop George. The next day, Susan packed up some snacks for George and he began the long walk to Neosho. By the time George made it to Neosho, the snacks were long gone. It was getting dark fast. George didn't know anybody in the town and he didn't have any money. He was tired and he was hungry. George spotted a barn. He had grown up on a farm, so a barn was a friendly place. There was no one inside. He set down his belongings and soon was fast asleep. 